Hello guys, welcome to my channel once more. In this particular video, I will be explaining explicitly, I will be explaining exactly how we can determine the specific capacity of a solid using the mixture method. Good. How is that possible? Let's get to the lab. For us to determine the specific capacity of a solid using the mixture method, we need the following items. We need a thermometer, this is a thermometer. We need a copper calorimeter, this is a copper calorimeter. We need an electronic balance, this is an electronic balance. We need a given quantity of water, that's water. We need a lagging material that is, is used for reducing heat loss by the calorimeter. We need a stirrer, this is a stirrer. We need a solid whose specific capacity is to be determined, this is a solid. We need a heating source. Good. With all of these, first thing, we measure the mass of the copper calorimeter. We measure the mass of the copper calorimeter and we have it as 52 grams. You could see from there, 52 grams. We go to our table, the table of this nature, we record the mass, MC, mass of calorimeter, MC, 52 grams. We go back, we remove the calorimeter, we place our solid whose mass is recorded as 50 grams. You could see 50 grams, we go to our table, mass of solid, 50 grams, 50 grams. Good. The next thing is for us to determine the mass of the water which we are going to use in the experiment. We introduce a given quantity of water into the calorimeter and we have a reading of 137. So the mass of the water will be 137 minus the mass of empty calorimeter. So mass of water is 137 grams. Minus, minus the mass of an empty calorimeter, which is 52 grams. Good. Away from that, we now measure the temperature of the water, the temperature of the solid. Of course, the temperature of the water, the temperature of the solid, and even the temperature of the calorimeter will be the temperature of the room. We have the same temperature as the room temperature. And our value we have uh, 20 29 degree celsius so room temperature which we call it theta 2 is 29 degree celsius we record theta 2 equals to 29 degree celsius so what do we do next we take the solid whose specific capacity is to be measured we introduce it into the hot water and we allow the solid there for some time for equilibrium to be established between the hot water and the solid. Wait for some time, there's exchange of thermal energy between the water and the solid. After some time, equilibrium temperature will reach. And then we'll measure the equilibrium temperature by introducing our thermometer into the mixture. The temperature is increasing, the alcohol thread is increasing, up to a certain level it will stop increasing which will be the temperature of the water and the temperature of the solid we are at exactly 70 degree celsius 70 degree celsius that is the temperature of the solid so we'll quickly transfer the solid into the lax calorimeter and then we close the container and we stir, we stir, we stir the mixture using the stirrer and we wait for some time for final temperature to be reached. The, the equilibrium temperature, which is theta 3, we are going to record it theta 3, which is the temperature of the mixture. The temperature is dropping from 70, 70, it is going down 40, 45. Right now we are at um, exactly 33 degree celsius so the 
final temperature, the final temperature theta 3 is 33 degrees Celsius, 33 degrees Celsius, 33 degrees Celsius. And the initial temperature of the solid, don't forget, is 70 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature of the solid while it was inside the warm water. So we quickly transferred the solid into the cold water in order to reduce heat loss into the environment. So after having all of this data, having all of this information, the next thing is to pass over to calculation. For us to get to the calculation, we need a specific capacity of water, which is standard, you know it, 4,200 joules per kilogram per, per kilogram per Kelvin, per kilogram Kelvin. We need the specific capacity of the calorimeter, which is 390 joules per kilogram Kelvin. And uh, we are going to calculate the specific capacity of the solid by applying the law of conservation of energy. The law of conservation of energy here we imply that the heat lost by the hot solid by the solid will be equal to the heat gain by the calorimeter plus the heat gain by the water. Heat gain by calorimeter plus heat gain by the water. We are assuming that heat gain by thermometer, heat gain by the stirrer is negligible. So we apply the equation. This is the mathematical expression of the heat loss by the solid, which is M, mass of solid, times specific capacity of the solid, times the difference in temperature, theta 1 minus theta 3. Theta 1 is the initial temperature of the solid, which we had it as 70. Theta 3 is the final temperature of the mixture, which we have it as 33. Now we have, this, all of this is equal to mass of calorimeter, times the capacity of calorimeter, times the Temperature change, which is theta 3 minus theta 2. Theta 3 is the temperature of the mixture, which was 33 degrees Celsius. It is 33 degrees Celsius. And theta 2 is 29 degrees Celsius, which is the room temperature, or the temp temperature of the cold water and the temperature of the copper calorimeter. And finally, the heat gain by water is mass of water times the capacity of water times the heat change which is theta 3 minus theta 2 so from this equation of conservation of energy we can therefore make cs which is the specific capacity of solid the formula of this the, the subject of the formula we can make cs the formula the, the subject of the formula and from there we now substitute these quantities, when we substitute these quantities, we are going to have the specific capacity of the solid as required. Thank you very much. If you did enjoy the experiment, please subscribe, share, and comment. Thank you very much. See you soon in the next experiment. Bye. Good.